large volumes of data and complex logic make healthcare analytics a challenge. New capabilities to address these requirements have been added to Power BI for use with powerful databases such as those in Azure. These new capabilities can help healthcare analytics teams achieve more. This video is published as a supplement to an article I published on Microsoft's Healthcare and Life Sciences blog titled Unleash Massive Healthcare Data Volumes to Analytics Using Power BI Aggregations. A link to that article is available in the video description. Healthcare reporting and analytics often require massive data volumes with tables that are both exceptionally wide and deep. Architectural concepts such as large type two dimension tables, many to many relationships, and secondary key relationships are rare exceptions in most business intelligence designs, yet are common in healthcare. Numerous reference tables are often required that can have complex architectures due to ever changing categorization systems such as DRGs, ICD 10s. CPT codes, and others. Add calculation logic, such as qualifying visits, length of stay calculations, complications, and cohort inclusion exclusion criteria for patients, then the challenges become extremely daunting. Successful solution design requires deep healthcare industry expertise along with powerful tools. Have you been held back by data volume limitations in Power BI? If Power BI import models hit the Pro 1 gig and premium 10 gig limitations, while direct query models demand too many resources from your source databases. Power BI's new aggregations feature, combined with composite models, can now help you unlock massive volumes of data for analytics. An ideal target architecture would allow data to be stored in one place and queried by users who interface with a purely logical metadata layer. What you're looking at is a simple diagram of a direct query model from a tool such as Power BI. Relational databases, role app models, and more recently direct query tabular models all achieve this goal, but query complexity and user concurrency often create performance bottlenecks due to technical limitations of those source databases. Cached data models have been an effective workaround since the MOLAP days. Import mode tabular models within SQL Server Analysis Services, Excel Power Pivot models, and Power BI import models all leverage a cache of data to enable high query concurrency with complex logic. Import models have great performance, but caching extremely large volumes of data is not always practical or scalable. Power BI now offers composite models, which combine the best of both traditional options by allowing both import and direct query tables in the same model. Tables with extremely large volumes of data or near real-time requirements can be in direct query mode, and tables that are suited to a cache can be in import or dual mode. Let's consider the following Azure SQL database for a demo. It's about 35 and a half gigs in a relational database, having over 90 million rows in the detail table. The data is real CMS Medicare Part D data. As you can see, when I pull all of the data into an import model, it compresses down to about 1.8 gigs. That's 20 times compression, which normally is pretty good, but that's still a large amount of data to cache. With the model that I built using aggregations, it's down to 35 megs. The footprint of the cache data is about 1 1,000th of the size of the source. With aggregations for a composite model, an import mode summary table will be queried whenever logically possible, and the full direct query mode detail table will only be queried when details in the summary table do not exist for the query. In this example, my aggregation table imports summed up numerical values that are grouped by state, specialty, and drug. The source table that is in direct query mode also has additional detail for city and individual prescribers. In the aggregation table, those 90 million plus rows are pared down to about 725,000 rows. Are aggregations just a fancy new version of a summary table? Yes and no. With traditional summary tables, users would either need to select separate calculations for summary and detail reporting, or programmatically switch between the two tables using tricky DAX or historically MDX code. In this example, you'll see that I've created one DAX expression on a column that is in that source direct query table. And when that expression is run in a report, it will automatically look to see if it can query the aggregation table first, and then it will only send a direct query if it needs details that are not available in that aggregation, such as physician level data or city level data. Let's take this another step further. Aggregations can be imported summary tables, but they can also be in dual mode or direct query mode. Direct query mode aggregations can effectively be used as indexes to optimize queries that are sent back to a source. Multiple aggregations can also be added to the same source table. 
and precedence can be given so that the most efficient ones are evaluated for queries first. So if I go ahead and go to manage aggregations, you'll see that there's an option here for precedence. Aggregations can be queried before a true direct query is sent to the source. So what's this do for performance? Let's take a look. Moving back to my model, I'll go to the report. And on this first page, I can go ahead and select individual drugs and you'll see the queries run really, really fast. That's because everything that we're looking at here is hitting the cache. Let's go ahead and add the performance analyzer. Let's start recording. And let's hit a few more things to send a filter to that cache. You'll see that these queries are just DAX queries that are running extremely fast against that aggregation table. Let's move to the next tab. On this tab, once again, we can run some queries that are hitting the cache. Everything runs really, really fast. We can come down to the filter selection and even select a specialty. We can go ahead and clear that filter. Now let's drill into an individual state. Now, if I move down the list in the performance analyzer, you'll see that there's a longer query here that was taking a little bit longer to run. And that's because when we went down to the city level, it actually fired off a direct query back at the source. So you had the DAX query for that cache, and then you also had the direct query, which went to get that city level data. Let's go ahead and drill into it a little bit further. When we drill to detail, you'll then see that another set of queries opens up and the queries take a little bit longer to run. That's because it's running larger, more complicated queries against that undersized Azure SQL database, which I'm using for demo purposes. You can even copy the query, move to Notepad, and take a look at what it's actually passing back to that source. In summary, Power BI aggregations with composite models expands the possibilities for building models leveraging larger healthcare data volumes while still allowing for great query performance and high user concurrency. Please check out the blog article linked in the description for more details, leave a comment, or you can contact me on Twitter or LinkedIn.